Welcome back. We continue our celebration of Women's History Month with a closer look at the state of women-owned businesses. Joining me tonight are frequent CBS News Detroit contributor Beverly Watts, president of BME Consulting, and Deidre Bounds, president of Ignite Social Media. Thank you both for being here today. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having us. us. So, Let's be real, it's 2024. Yes. The idea of women being in leadership positions is not exactly a new concept, but things have changed over the years. There's still a ways to go, but uh, let's start with you, Beverly. If you yeah. both could explain to me just how, has, how have things changed since the start of your career and now for women in leadership positions? It's changed a lot, you know. I would say it definitely has evolved. Mm -hmm. You know, I think everyone's becoming more uh, aware of, of what we women, we're organizers, you know, we're innovators, we bring a lot to the table. So I think more, you know, as starting to see what women bring to the table and being entrepreneurs, yeah. you know, you know, running a household, you know, everyone knows that's a business. It's always a business. Really, you're the CEO, right? And so I think it really has evolved over the years and definitely uh, since my career started, you know, where I am now and up to 2024. So it's an exciting time to be a woman and especially a minority woman. Yeah. How about you, Deidre? Well, you know, I grew up in the world of marketing and, you know, when I started, marketing was the man's world. Uh, people, you know, they think back and they're like, oh, it must be like it was for Mad Men. Sure. Uh, right. But when I started, women were definitely in marketing, but in much lower level positions. We were uh, account managers, we were secretaries, we were those kinds of things. And many women had to start their own businesses to get into positions of power, um, to get into a position where they could actually have a say about what was happening with clients. And that's kind of what happened with, um, you know, my mentor, the person who sort of raised me up in marketing, she started her own firm. And since then, what's happened is that the shift, the shift of, um, I think diversity, needing to fill diversity uh, roles within marketing has happened. You've got, yes, a lot of women still starting their own businesses, mm -hmm. but we are also creative directors. We're also um, global directors in marketing. Where, and back in the day, that was really the man's role, the man's mm -hmm. job. Um, and the pay <laughs> that went with those roles uh, is also now shifting a bit where we're we're earning more, not not the same. Still have that it needs wage. to go we higher. Still, yes, we still have a ways to go, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? We're still earning yeah. eighty cents on the dollar yeah. that every man earns, um, but it's certainly shifting, and it's shifting primarily because we're opening and starting and running our own businesses. Absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned running a household is like running a business. There's yes. so many studies out there that find that even the most successful women who are running businesses are also running things yes. at home and kind of running it all at the same time. Uh, yes. How does that make it more difficult or, or is that a strength for a lot of women? It is a strength, but it's also difficult too because you have to set your priorities. Of course, for me, family is first, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, your career, you have to balance it all. Uh, speaking of like what, what Deidre was saying in the world of marketing, I come from the infrastructure or, or government where, you know, years ago it was unheard of for uh, a woman to lead her own company infrastructure or even running a road agency. So I'm proud to see that you have a lot of women now who are entrepreneurs. When you're talking about construction companies, when you're talking about design companies, you know, planning companies, that is really phenomenal. But women still have to balance it and do it both. And you have to remember uh, a lot of homes in America even Michigan, you know, is run by women. It's a single yeah. family household, so you're doing both. Uh, but I have to say women step up to the plate and they're doing it well, raising the future leaders and also being an entrepreneur, you know, for our community, improving our state. Yeah. Deidre, you already mentioned the wage gap, the persistent yes. wage gap. Yes. What are some of the other challenges that women still face in the workforce? Well, I, again, I think within your own company, you can have a lot of say, but then there are Sometimes we serve on boards that are male-dominated boards, right? And you've got to find a way to have your voice heard. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just enough to check the box to say we've got women or we've got minorities yes. on our, our board. You have to listen to them. So sometimes it's a struggle to be heard, and you've got to show up in a way that is true to who you are but also in a way that gets the attention and have something to say in a way that people really can listen to you and hear you. Um, so I, I think just really figuring out how you show up in that room and making sure that you are, you, you're bringing something to the table that's smart, um, that you don't get uh, put off by not think, feeling like you're not being heard, but doing it in a way that 
gets people to want to listen to you. What kind of advice would you have for younger women who are intimidated by that, that environment that sometimes discourages women from speaking up or really saying, really bringing the ideas that yeah. they have to the table? So I've got two answers to that. The first answer is, as women, our job is to bring a, another woman along. And so if you show someone how to act in those environments, you yeah. give them firsthand exposure to how to act, how to show up, how to present themselves in a way that they, they won't get unless they're seeing it done. The other um, suggestion that I would have is to do your homework, mm -hmm. know what you're talking about, have an opinion, and be steadfast in your opinion, but also know that there's lots of ways to get to from from A to B mm -hmm. and you may have one way it may not be the only way so don't get discouraged just try again make sure. that your power yeah yeah I see you nodding yeah. a lot what about you what, what <laughs> advice would you give Beverly I would give you said make that your power you know you're gonna get a lot of no's a lot of rejection but yeah. make that your energy because when you have that passion when you have that dream uh, you gotta look at a lot of successful people they got maybe a hundred no's until mm -hmm. they got the two yeses. But if they gave up, you would never be able to be where you're yeah. at now. So I would say make that your energy and make that your goal and make that your strive. And then I would just say, really work together, get advice. Look at others who are doing it, you know, what you're looking about doing. Ask them how did they get started? What's the challenges they had? What are the successes they had? And then you work that and then you tweak it to make it whatever your passion is. But definitely also, and I want to say, don't isolate men either. This is, even though we're women, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to bridge mm -hmm. that together. We, yes. we, we need both, you know, every background, everybody come to the table to make it work. But I would definitely say advice, partnership, coordinate, and do your whole work, just like Deidre said. But make that your power, your passion, your energy. Well, thank you both for the example that you set and for being here today. I really Thank appreciate you. talking with you both. Me. Thank yeah. you so much. Yes.